Hi, welcome to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen. So today we are going to look at AP Psychology 1.2 Overview of the Nervous System. We're going to look at the key terms today. So if you haven't already watched the video that has the summary of all the information that you need to know in 1.2, do that first and then you can have a chance to look at all the key terms that are important for this unit. So what I do with my students is I recommend that they get these little like handy little like um, flashcard books almost like they're little note cards and they're attached by a coil so you can put them together by each unit so that's really helpful when you're starting to study for an exam or if you're studying for just even a unit test but anyway you have a chance to write the words and you know the definition so that you can kind of do a flashcard kind of idea this is really helpful on your way to the test or just before the test i know there's there's definitely things online that you can use quit a lot of my students like to use quizlet which is great um, when you have the computer but if you don't have a computer these are super handy okay so let's have a look at the 1.2 um, key terms. And what I'm just going to do is I'm really basically just going to read them to you. And so that you can pause, you can read them. And then at the end, if you've done my 1.1, you know, I'm just going to flash the words and then you can try to remember what those uh, words mean and maybe give yourself an example. It's really good to have a real life example because that's going to help you remember the words a lot better. Okay. So, and here we go. Okay, so the first slide we're going to look at is the list of key terms for 1.2. You probably saw this on the summary video if you've watched the summary video, but on this video, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through each of the words, definition, example, so that you can take notes for your flashcards or your notebook, or even just listen if you want to just listen, okay? So we'll start with the nervous system. The nervous system is the body's network of specialized cells neurons that transmit signals between different parts of the body. It coordinates and controls various functions, including sensation, movement, thoughts, and emotion. So when you touch a hot stove, the sensory neurons in your skin send signals through the nervous system to your spinal cord and then back to your brain. Your brain processes this information and sends the signal back through the nervous system to move your hand away from the stove, protecting you from harm. The next one, arousal system. The arousal system refers to the neural mechanisms responsible for regulating wakefulness, alertness, and overall physiological arousal levels. The arousal system activates in response to environmental stimuli or internal signals, such as when you wake up in the morning to the sound of an alarm. It involves a complex interactions between various brain regions, neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine, and the reticular activating system, the RAS, in the brainstem, which collectively influence your level of consciousness and readiness to respond to stimuli throughout the day. Autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system, the ANS, regulates involuntary bodily functions, such as your heartbeat, digestion, respiration rate, and pupillary response. Pupillary, sorry, pupillary response. When you feel scared, your autonomic nervous system initiates the fight or flight response. This can cause your heart rate to increase, pupils to dilate, and digestion to slow down, preparing your body to respond to the potential danger. Autonomic response. An automatic response refers to an involuntary physiological reaction that occurs automatically in response to a stimulus, typically involving the automatic nervous system, the ANS. When encountering a sudden threat, such as a car suddenly swerving in front of you while you're driving, your autonomic nervous system initiates a fight or flight response. This response triggers changes like an increased heart rate, dilation of pupils, and heightened alertness, all aimed at preparing your body to either confront the danger or escape from it. These responses are automatic and occur without conscious control, illustrating the role of the autonomic nervous system in reacting to potentially threatening situations. Central nervous system. The central nervous system, the CNS, includes the brain and spinal cord. It's responsible for processing information from the body's sensory receptors and coordinating responses via motor neurons. Example. So when you touch a hot stove, sensory neurons in your hand send signals through the spinal cord to the brain, which interprets the pain and signals the motor neurons to move your hand away quickly. This rapid response demonstrates the CNS's role in processing sensory information and initiating motor action. Fight or flight response. 
The fight or flight response is a physiological reaction triggered in response to a perceived threat or stressful situation. It prepares the body to either confront the threat, fight, or flee to safety, flight. Imagine walking in a forest and suddenly you encounter a bear. Your body's fight or flight response kicks in. Adrenaline and cortisol are released. Your heart rate increases. Your breathing quickens. Your muscles tense. These changes prepare you to either stand your ground, fight, probably not a great idea with bear, or quickly run away, flight, helping you react swiftly to the perceived danger parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system, the PNS, is part of the autonomic nervous system responsible for conserving energy and promoting relaxation. So after a stressful event, such as narrowly avoiding the car accident, the parasympathetic nervous system kicks in to restore the body's calm state. It slows down your heart rate, it constricts your pupils, it promotes digestion, and it helps the body return to its normal resting state. Somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is a part of the peripheral nervous system that controls voluntary movements and sensory information from sensory receptors to the central nervous system. So when you decide to kick a ball, your somatic nervous system coordinates the movement. The sensory neurons inform the CNS about the ball's position and your intention to kick it. Motor neurons then execute the movement, sending the signals to your leg muscles to perform that action. Sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system, the SNS, is part of the autonomic nervous system, and it mobilizes the body's resources during times of stress and arousal. So when you're faced with a threatening situation, such as encountering a dangerous animal, your sympathetic nervous system activates, and this results in increased heart rate, dilated pupils, heightened alertness, and inhibition of non-essential bodily functions like digestion. It prepares you to either fight or flee from the danger. Enteric nervous system. The enteric nervous system is a division of the autonomic nervous system that controls the gastrointestinal system. So when you eat a meal, the enteric nervous system coordinates the movements of your stomach and in intestines to digest the food. So it regulates uh, processes like peristalsis, oh, peristalsis, <laughs> wow, a muscle contraction that move through the digestive tract and control secretion of digestive enzymes and fluids necessary for breaking down food. The peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system consists of nerves and ganglia outside of the brain and spinal cord. It connects the central nervous system to the limbs and organs, transmitting sensory information and motor commands. So when you step on a sharp object, sensory neurons in your foot send signals through the peripheral nervous system to your spinal cord and your brain, alerting you to the pain. Motor neurons in the PNS then convey signals back to move your foot away, avoiding further injury. Reflex. A reflex is an automatic response to a stimulus, typically involving a sensory neuron and a motor neuron. When you touch the hot stove, here's the hot stove again, lots of examples with that one, sensory neurons in your skin send a signal to your spinal cord. This triggers a reflex arc where motor neurons immediately send a signal back to contract your muscles, pulling your hand away before you consciously feel the pain. Rest and digest. Rest and digest refers to the activities of the parasympathetic nervous system, which conserves energy by slowing down the heart rate and increasing intestinal and gland activity when the body is relaxed. After eating a meal, after eating a meal, your parasympathetic nervous system activates to help your body digest the food. This might make you feel more relaxed and a little sleepy, allowing your body to focus on processing the nutrients. Voluntary movements. Voluntary movements are intentional controlled movements that are consciously directed by the brain. So when you decide to pick up a glass of water, your brain sends a signal through your nervous system to your arm and hand muscles to perform the action. This deliberate act of reaching and grasping is a voluntary movement. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm just going to flash the words. And what I want you to do is to try to say, so pause, pause the video when you see the word, try to say what it means. and. Think of the example, you can go through your notes at first, but then if you are closer to the test or your exam, just go through the words without actually having the words, the, the definitions handy. So here we go. Nervous system. 
arousal system. Autonomic nervous system. Autonomic response. Central nervous system. Fight or flight response. Parasympathetic nervous system. Somatic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system. Enteric nervous system. Peripheral nervous system. Reflex. Rest and digest. Voluntary movements. Okay, so that's the end of this video, 1.2 key terms. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to keep going with these units. I'm going to do 1.3 next, but I'm going to keep going through all the new units of the AP Psychology uh, curriculum, as well as some other content on my, on my YouTube channel. I do read books and I talk about the different, you know, um, characters and themes and all of that. So I do a few different things, which is why it's called Learn With Me. So keep learning with me if you like me. Thanks. Have a great day.